Welcome to our series featuring the audio edition of my book, Iris After the Incident, narrated by Rachel Coates. A playlist with all the chapters in order is on the Romance Class YouTube channel. We hope you've been enjoying romance books by Filipino authors and do check out romanceclassbooks.com. Content warnings are mentioned in chapter 1 and are included in the description for this video. Chapter 25 Friday was Miley's last day at work. She wasn't leaving for Geneva just yet, but there were things to do before going on a great new adventure, like shopping for a completely new wardrobe and hopping off to a last, exquisitely long beach trip, as one does when switching hemispheres. By then, I wasn't worried. I shouldn't be worried for another year anyway, she told me, at least until the Figueres patriarch did his annual evaluation of the subsidiaries and foundations. As long as we kept the lights on, she'd fight to keep us all employed. He should be happy, Miley said. We got more new donors this year, and a new grants opened up this week. We got the commitment yesterday. Maybe we're a new trend, I replied. Female scientists, yay. Whatever the reason, I'm glad for the money. We were in Miley's office, and it was a mess of boxes and personal items being sorted and packed up. I was not going to be moving into the room, even if I was taking over most of her work. I didn't feel it was right. And also, her dad was going to be appointing a consultant to be the credible older person, because sometimes that was needed. That person would be occupying this room. Hey, she said. A Francine told me that you emailed her. I did that yesterday. I totally ignored the email Miley sent, providing Francine's contact info. But when I got to work, a message from her was the first thing I saw. She was doing an anti-bullying seminar and needed input on something. It wasn't even a big deal, in the end. I quickly replied, agreed to see more of her material, and maybe even coffee if she needed more. Yeah, I answered. I'm not ready to talk about myself yet, but she didn't need me to talk about myself. Francine's great. I should see her before I go. You should. Take my next meeting, will you? Miley said. Conference room, right now. I don't want to do any other work thing today. Gotcha, I said. What's this about? Exploratory meeting with new donor corporation? There's an amount committed, so ask them how they want it allocated and spent, and maybe other miscellaneous agenda items. I could do all of that, no problem. Done and done. Grabbing my notepad and my pen, I headed over to the conference room. Miley's 2 p.m. was there and ready to meet. Miley's 2 p.m. was Giomella. Giomella in a pressed shirt, a tie, a coat, dark pants, leather shoes. This is real, he said. It's a real meeting, not a setup. I had a feeling they'd send you to talk to me. What was he even doing here? Was he getting a job? Here, was he... Oh, I said the most logical answer sinking in. Your family's company is the donor. Gio nodded. The family already has a foundation. I was able to get them to commit some of the money specifically for this. This? Chemistry and chemical engineering scholarships. Research grants for ethical and sustainable cosmetic chemistry projects. You did this? Yes, I did. Gio shifted in the leather chair, and it bounced softly. It wasn't so hard, once I looked at the annual reports. It does make a lot of sense, I admitted. As far as Bella Marielle Cosmetics is concerned, anyway, the benefits are obvious. How long is this meeting? An hour. Can I tell you something now, or do we have to do that later? I didn't want to talk about anything else at work, but here we were and I couldn't be expected to draft a budget when certain things were unsaid. I wasn't a robot. I still had feelings. Miscellaneous items. What? My boss, Miley, said this meeting was about the new grant and miscellaneous items. So, sure. Say what you need to say. My pen was quite accidentally poised over a blank page. This was my work stance. Even on this conference table that could seat eight, I was in my usual chair, my usual spot, straight back, pen ready. 
in five hundred words or less, I added. That took him aback. What? We go for clear and concise in this room. Cut out the padding. Gio suppressed a smile and placed his palms on the table. Fine. I don't get to mess around and try again. How many words is that already? Fine. He looked great, all cleaned up and serious. Iris. I had a thousand apologies ready for what happened at the Gaitai. For everything you saw, everything I said to you, everything that everyone else said to you. I left some half-assed apologies under your door, you probably ignored them. Then, I remember that you've already told me a bunch of times that I apologize too much. I had told him that. Yes. He continued. Maybe that's been my problem. For a long time. I don't fit in there with my family. I feel that you might tell me to be happy, that they accept me for who I am, because other families are so close-minded and harsh. I know that I'm lucky, in many ways. That they have all this money, that they've given me so much and that I can screw up so badly and not have any of that jeopardized. Yes, you are lucky. I know that. I want to keep that lucky streak going. Can I ask you a question now? Me? Yes, that happens in this room, right? You get asked questions too? Yes, I do. Do you think you will ever meet someone like me again? It was not the question I expected. And I laughed and coughed. That's what you ask me? The sly grin was slightly out of place on serious, cleaned-up Geo, but I liked it. I was beginning to recognize him again. And that's what I said. I understand why you want to dump me. I did the worst thing. The thing I said I never wanted to do. I hurt you again. And you shouldn't instantly forgive that. It takes a special kind of stupidity to find new way to hurt you, and I found it. Damn it. This was... He was right. Gio continued. I hope you're going to let me defend myself. Yes, that was completely stupid, but I can learn. You know I can. But it's going to be a struggle. I imagine there will be other shit. I have issues. My family's expensive, excess baggage to carry around. You'll run into Vanna, and that can't be as fun as she makes it sound. I don't want to completely uproot myself and live somewhere no one knows me either. Like I said, I was lucky to have been born into that family, and I've been trying to see how long I can live without the privileges, but this can't be permanent. I'm not ready for it. I don't see how that has anything to do with... But you know, all of this. You know because we told each other everything, so I wondered... How could I have screwed this up? Then I realized that you think I watched your video. What? He was watching my face and knew we had something. You think I watched it? You think I watched it and knew everything you liked and still completely misunderstood you? But I gave it to you and gave you time to watch it and then you left the room. I didn't watch it, Iris. I didn't know what you liked. I wasn't going to learn it, seeing you with a guy who left. I wanted to learn it for myself. I knew I'd do better. I gasped. You really are competitive. You never saw it. What did this mean? How did it change anything? It meant he knew, but didn't see the way I knew of his history but never saw. It didn't change that it happened, that we did things with other people, but at some point everyone would have history that they chose to hide or share. Trust was going to have to fill the gaps. You gave me a way to start over, I said. No, he said. You did that for me first. We could argue about this all day. I'm falling for you. His words spilled out, padding cut. I am. If you're worried about our other baggage, those other incidents, that we could talk about it and maybe work out anything that we need to work out about it, but I already know and I don't care. I'm falling anyway. Have you thought about why you maybe shouldn't? He pulled back, 
sharply. You interrupted me. And yes, of course, probably just as much as you think about me being the worst thing to ever happen to you. This? This was what was bothering him? What a boneheaded thing to say, I told him. You're not the worst thing. He raised an eyebrow. Do you think... You can still trust me? I like to think that all the time I spent in this room, meeting people, and judging their sincerity and intentions, could tell me how to feel as he asked me this. But this wasn't work. This was my heart. My future. I probably was never going to meet someone else like him again, soon. I can, I said. You think you can fall for me? Well, yeah. How bad was this past week for you? He paused, and maybe was waiting for a response. It was bad, I admitted. His face fell. Because of me? Yes and no. But it was all connected, and I had to accept that. Because I thought I was over it, people calling me names and people calling you names. I wish I could say I can't be affected by it. I keep thinking, what will my family say? I just found out that they've forgiven me, and you know what? They'll take me back in if I agree that we erase what happened, move on as before. I don't suppose that offer will stand if I keep seeing you. So you're saying we're over? I rolled my eyes. I'm not saying that at all. He frowned. Maybe you need to cut the padding yourself then. Do you want to stay together or not? I do, I said. That was nice. A little loaded phrase that was nonetheless pleasant, peaceful even. I do. I want to stay together anyway, I was going to say. Because screw what they say they want. Screw forgiveness on their terms. Screw acceptance that isn't really acceptance. I don't need that in my life. And me? You need me. That earned him one of my best fake scowls. What do you want to hear, Gio? Why you need me? Feel free to exceed 500 words. I was going to tease him some more about what a dumb question that was, but no, it wasn't so dumb. He needed to hear it, and honesty was good to include as a daily habit for me. You've seen the worst of it, and somehow you're in here looking hot in that suit, and I know how great we can be together. Oh. Gia looked at what he was wearing, pulled his coat together. This is mine, you know. My own clothes. They look great. It doesn't hurt that you're here making sure more women study science. Doesn't hurt that this way I'm sure to find someone who can replace me in the company. Of course. It made sense. I shrugged and pretended to write a note on the pad. Applicant is practical and forward-thinking. History of questionable decisions. Heart and mind in right place. So, is that settled? He asked. What's settled? His face tipped toward me, closer. Not enough to reach me, but enough to make the room seem smaller, and make me feel warm and inappropriately tingly. You, me, falling, everything. And finally, applicants' eyes are irresistible. Recommendation is not to resist. Yes. Settled. Where to go? Awesome. He leaned back, and it was all business again. What's next? This. I tapped my pen against the notepad. We actually do have to structure your grant. You ready to work, Gio? Yes, he said. Finally. That was chapter 25 of Iris After the Incident, narrated by Rachel Coates. Text and production copyright by Mina Viesguera. The next chapter is the last chapter of this book. If you enjoyed this and want to read another book of mine in audio, look for Better at Weddings Than You, narrated by Rachel Coates and Gio Gahol, available at all audio retailers.